Canada currently has a housing crisis. The average rent in our country hitting an all-time high in the month of May, topping $2,200 a month for the first time ever. The average rent in Canada has reached an all-time high of $2,202 Canadian dollars. And if rent is already this expensive, what more for aspiring homeowners? The benchmark price of a family home costs up to $703,600 Canadian dollars, and the average price for a condo unit is a whopping $529,100 Canadian dollars in 2024. However, the average cost of a home back in 2023, the same month, only amounted to $550,100 Canadian dollars. With prices soaring this high, this leads us to an important question. Can Canadians still own houses at the rate of the housing crisis the country is going through? Is there still a possibility to have affordable housing in Canada? The housing crisis in Canada is not solely about escalating real estate prices. It is a complex issue deeply linked with various sectors of the economy. Several significant factors stand out upon closer examination. Firstly, there is a noticeable imbalance between demand and supply. With a growing number of immigrants each year and a labor force eager to settle in urban centers, the housing shortage has become more severe. Cities like Toronto and Vancouver are particularly affected, with available homes often being purchased within days or even hours. Additionally, historically low mortgage rates in Canada have encouraged borrowing, leading to a substantial amount of mortgage debt, raising fears of a potential housing bubble burst. Canada's promising housing market also drew in investors from other countries as they saw the business opportunities it could offer. While this influx of capital might be seen as a sign of confidence, it has undeniably made affordable housing more challenging for many Canadians. Moreover, the increasing unaffordability of homes is putting pressure on the labor force. As housing becomes less affordable, many individuals are considering relocating, which impacts personal life choices, business decisions, urban planning, and overall economic growth. A user in Reddit explains, and houses were scooped up by real estate investors, driving up the prices and making it an even more appealing for more investors to drive up prices even more. Here in BC, the provincial government is banning Airbnbs that aren't the investor's primary residence. All of the sudden, there are all these condos flooding the market. Reports indicate that millennials need an annual income of 200,000 Canadian dollars to afford an average home in Vancouver, and 150,000 Canadian dollars in Toronto, with mortgage affordability being only part of the challenge. At current savings rates, it would take an average millennial 29 years to save a 20% down payment in Vancouver and 21 years in Toronto. However, millennials in other provinces are in a better position, as housing prices are significantly lower in places like Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and the Maritimes. In Manitoba and New Brunswick, a 20% down payment can be saved in eight and five years, respectively. Therefore, while Toronto and Vancouver present a bleak picture, the situation is more promising in many other parts of the country. Nonetheless, a significant number of millennials live in these two expensive cities. I briefly discussed some factors as to what led to the housing crisis, but let's delve deeper into the reasons. Which policies led to the housing crisis and who's to blame for it? When asked about the housing crisis in Canada and the steep rise of renting prices during his term, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau puts the blame on everything else but his administration. Boy, we could talk about uh, the global economy, the inflation crisis that came from the fact that we had a once-in-a-century pandemic. We Speaking on the Globe and Mail City Space podcast, Trudeau explained that housing is not just a basic necessity but also a critical component of Canadians' financial security. By saying housing needs to retain its value, he emphasized that a stable housing market is essential for individuals' retirement plans and their ability to build a future nest egg. Trudeau's statement highlights the delicate balance policymakers must strike between ensuring housing affordability and protecting the investments of current homeowners. If housing prices were to drop significantly, it could undermine the financial stability of many Canadians who rely on the equity in their homes as part of their retirement planning. 
However, if prices continue to rise unchecked, affordability issues will persist, preventing many from entering the housing market. Renters matter, and young Canadians put a lot of their hard-earned money towards rent. We think that should count for a lot more, Trudeau stated in a press conference. While Trudeau's take makes sense, how will the average Canadian battle through the current housing crisis if the prices are maintained? The housing crisis in Canada is escalating, particularly affecting first-time home buyers who are grappling with rising costs, stagnant wages, and a severe housing supply shortage. This situation is particularly challenging for millennials and Gen Z who are experiencing significant barriers to home ownership. A report from Canadian Mortgage Professional indicates that home ownership rates have been declining since 2011, with a notable increase in renter households, especially among those aged 25 to 39. Key factors contributing to this decline include higher education costs, tougher job requirements, lower pay, and rising borrowing costs, which make it difficult for younger people to enter the housing market. The supply crunch, with only one housing start for every 4.9 new working age residents, exacerbates the issue creating an unprecedented housing supply deficit. Furthermore, public servants warned the government two years ago that significant increases in immigration could impact housing affordability and services, as revealed by internal documents obtained by the Canadian press. The federal government decided to increase the number of permanent residents to 500,000 annually by 2025, nearly double the number from 2015. This decision has faced scrutiny especially as three in four Canadians believe higher immigration worsens the housing crisis. Public servants highlighted that rapid population growth strains health care and affordable housing, with settlement service providers feeling the pressure due to labor market conditions and increased immigration levels, including those from Afghanistan and Ukraine. With all of these data challenging the average Canadian, how are they coping with the housing crisis in Canada? For Tianning Ning and her family, Airbnb offered a solution to live in Toronto amid the city's tough rental market. Originally from Switzerland, they needed a place for 10 months during Ning's husband's sabbatical at York University, but couldn't secure a rental due to their lack of Canadian credit history. Across Canada, renters face a limited supply of affordable housing, while many properties are available as short-term rentals. Last August, Ning and her family booked a home in Toronto's Deer Park neighborhood, which suited their needs perfectly, allowing their children to attend a reputable school nearby and providing a place for Ning and her husband to work. Meanwhile, Jean-Francois Raymond was shocked to receive an eviction notice at the end of 2022 after living in his spacious apartment in Montreal's Hochelaga Maisonneuve neighborhood for 22 years, a place filled with memories where he raised his child. Despite efforts by the local borough council since 2016 to limit short-term tourist accommodations like Airbnb, certain areas, including his three-story building on Ontario Street, were allowed to operate such rentals. This busy area, known for its shops, cafes, and restaurants, was deemed suitable for vacation rentals. Raymond expressed his frustration, feeling unjustly displaced for the sake of tourism, as his landlord planned to convert the apartment into a short-term rental property. Despite the appeal of short-term rentals for tourists, they have exacerbated local housing affordability issues. Short-term rentals have removed a significant number of homes from Montreal's long-term rental market, making it harder for residents to find affordable housing. With Montreal having the highest percentage of renters among major North American cities, the rise in rents has been significant, influenced by factors such as real estate investment trusts and rising property values. Recent measures, like the city's right of first refusal law, aim to protect affordable rentals, but many renters continue to face challenges from rising rents and evictions. Canada's housing affordability crisis is prompting many residents, especially recent immigrants, to consider relocating either within the country or abroad. According to a survey by the Angus Reid Institute, 28% of Canadians are contemplating moving due to high housing costs, with the figure rising to 39% among those who have been in Canada for less than a decade. In urban areas like the Greater Toronto Area and Metro Vancouver, significant numbers are looking at more affordable regions, such as Alberta. 
Notably, 42% of those seeking new homes are considering relocating internationally, including the United States and other countries. The survey also highlights that high living costs are particularly affecting recent immigrants, with many departing Canada due to the steep cost of living. This trend poses a risk to Canada's reputation as a welcoming country and could impact the workforce in major cities. Understanding the history of the housing crisis is crucial for comprehending its current dynamics. By examining past trends, fluctuations in the housing market, and the factors that have influenced housing affordability over time, we can gain valuable insights into the origins and evolution of the crisis. This context helps to identify recurring issues and trends, enabling a deeper understanding of the present challenges and informing more effective solutions for the future. Over recent decades, the Canadian housing market has undergone notable transformations. Demographic shifts have played a significant role, with the retirement of the baby boomer generation and increasing immigration influencing housing demand and preferences. As baby boomers downsize or seek retirement communities and new immigrants settle in Canada, there has been a notable shift in housing needs and preferences. Concurrently, the types of housing available have evolved, with multifamily dwellings, such as apartments and apartment condominiums, becoming more prevalent. This change has notably altered the skylines of major Canadian cities, reflecting a move towards higher density living in urban areas. The residential construction sector has also seen periods of fluctuation, with single-family homes being predominant in the 1980s and a rise in apartment condominiums in the new millennium. These shifts illustrate how construction trends have adapted to changing lifestyles and housing demands. Additionally, the impact of these changes has been uneven across provinces. Overvalued markets such as Toronto, Hamilton, and Vancouver have experienced more pronounced price declines in recent years compared to other areas. Furthermore, interest rates have played a crucial role with higher mortgage rates in the 1980s leading to a more rapid recovery for single-family homes, while the lower rates of the 2000s spurred the growth of apartment condominium construction. Additionally, population growth, driven by immigration, has heightened housing demand, particularly in urban centers where new residents seek accommodation. Changes in household characteristics, such as declining household size and an aging population, have also impacted housing preferences, with smaller, more adaptable living spaces becoming increasingly desirable. Economic cycles, including recessions in the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s, have affected residential construction, causing varied impacts on single-family and multi-family dwellings. Lastly, government policies, such as tax credits, deductions, and subsidies, have had temporary effects on housing demand, exemplified by the boost provided by the first-time homebuyers tax credit in 2009. While many factors influencing Canada's housing market, such as interest rates, demographic shifts, and global economic trends, may be beyond the direct control of the government. This does not absolve policymakers from their responsibility to address the housing crisis. Governments have an important role in shaping housing markets through regulations, incentives, and support programs. They can influence housing affordability, availability, and stability through strategic interventions. For instance, implementing policies that address the supply-demand imbalance provide financial assistance to first-time home buyers or promote affordable housing developments are within the government's purview. Right now, there would probably be a lot of articles about Canada's plans to remedy the housing situation. While Trudeau is often criticized about his statements about the crisis, he has been laying out his plans to the public. But here are some recommendations from Ankit Mishra, a policy researcher from Cycle Capital. To address Canada's housing crisis effectively, government intervention is essential. The housing market has seen significant price increases, with the average home cost rising to $811,700 Canadian dollars by the end of 2021, a 43% increase from 2019. This rise has strained affordability, with the Housing Affordability Index reaching its highest level since 1991. Given that Canada's population is expected to grow significantly, 
by 2060, addressing these issues is crucial. Several key policy areas require attention. First, regulations and rules in the housing market need adjustment to ensure fairness. The rise of real estate investment trusts and their substantial market share have contributed to increased competition for first-time home buyers. To address this, policies should target multi-home purchases and raise taxes on investors, as seen in Singapore's housing reforms. Local zoning and permitting systems should be revised. Excessive regulations and development costs drive up housing prices. Reducing these barriers and allowing for flexible zoning could make housing construction more efficient and affordable. Additionally, support for vulnerable households is necessary. A rebate program could help those spending more than 30% of their income on rent, alleviating immediate financial pressure. Reviving incentives for purpose-built rentals is also critical. Historical programs that supported rental housing development should be reconsidered to boost the supply of affordable rentals. In comparison, here are the plans published by the Government of Canada. They want to accelerate home construction to better meet Canadians' needs and make homes more affordable. From design to completion, increasing the speed of building is crucial to getting people into suitable homes at reasonable prices. To stimulate this process, Canada will offer incentives to builders and promote the construction of specific types of housing, such as apartments and multiplexes. This strategy aims to lower rental costs, free up market space, and help Canadians save for their first home. Efforts will be made to expedite construction by encouraging municipalities to streamline their zoning and permitting procedures, investing in infrastructure that supports housing growth, and collaborating with provinces and territories on updating the National Building Code. These measures are designed to reduce delays and cut costs associated with lengthy bureaucratic processes. In Budget 2024, the Canadian government is introducing several key initiatives to support renters and first-time home buyers. A new $15 million Canadian dollar tenant protection fund will be established to bolster legal services and tenant advocacy organizations. This fund aims to address issues such as unfair rent increases and inadequate landlord practices, providing renters with crucial support during tenancy disputes. Additionally, the government plans to create a Canadian Renters' Bill of Rights. This initiative will establish a nationwide standard lease agreement, improve transparency in apartment pricing, and combat rent evictions. Developed in partnership with provincial and territorial governments, the bill seeks to ensure fair and transparent renting conditions across Canada. Also, the government plans to increase the supply of affordable housing across Canada. The Affordable Housing Fund, a 13.2 billion Canadian dollar initiative, provides low interest or forgivable loans and contributions for both new and renovated affordable housing projects. This fund also prioritizes support for Indigenous communities, Black-led organizations, and shelters for women and children. The 2023 Fall Economic Statement added $1 billion Canadian dollars to this fund, and Budget 2024 proposes an additional $1 billion Canadian dollars to further support nonprofit, cooperative, and public housing providers, addressing the needs of those most affected by the housing crisis. As Canada grapples with its housing crisis, all eyes are on the current administration to deliver effective solutions. The urgency to address rising home prices, affordability issues, and housing shortages has never been greater. With proposed increases in funding, streamlined processes, and targeted initiatives, the government's actions in the coming months will be crucial in shaping the future of housing in Canada. The public and stakeholders alike are closely watching to see if these measures will bring about the necessary relief and restore stability in the housing market. Thank you for watching.